Clean, clear, safe drinking water. Millions of people in the world don't have easy access to it. In North America, we take it for granted. We're lucky. We turn the tap and drink. This water came out of Lake Ontario, went through a number of pumps, was treated, spent some time in tanks and reservoirs, no doubt, was pumped through kilometer after kilometer after kilometer of pipe. How do engineers know that the insides of those pipes are safe and serviceable year after year after year? How do they know that the treatment applied to this water to make it safe to drink was as effective when the water came out of the lake as it is when it's in my glass? Well, it's research. And there's a brand new piece of research equipment at the Coastal Engineering Lab at Queen's called the Drinking Water Discoloration Facility. Principal investigator on that facility is Queen's engineering professor, Eve Villion. Professor Villion has agreed to show us around this afternoon. Let's go see. So, Professor Filion, we are in the brand new drinking water discoloration facility here at the Coastal Engineering Lab at Queen's. What can you tell me about this, uh, uh, this facility? Uh, this, this facility is mostly focused on looking at how material accumulates on uh, the pipe walls of uh, drinking water distribution systems. Uh, and so we're mo mostly interested in looking at the dynamics of that here. Okay. So, uh, uh, can you show us some of it? Uh, show us how it works? I'd be glad to, yes. Okay. This is the main hydraulic room, as I like to call it, and it's made up of two very large uh, pipe rigs. Um, so each rig is made up of about 200 meters of PVC pipe, uh, and water is taken from two very large reservoirs at the back here, and then pumped through the rig with uh, a high, high flow and low flow pump uh, over a number of days. And the idea is to try to um, make observations about how a material can accumulate on pipe walls uh, and how biofilm, so microbiological uh, organisms, can arrange themselves and accumulate on pipe walls. And so we're mostly focused on, um, again, sort of the water quality of the, of the water as it relates to this material that accumulates on walls. So you mentioned that the pipes are PVC. Yes. Is there a reason that you chose PVC for the pipe? There is. Um, in North America, in most North American cities, all of the new pipe um, is either ductile iron or uh, PVC pipe. So this pipe actually is the pipe that would be used underground uh, in a city network. I see. And how do, you, uh, how do you assess or harvest the biofilm once it's accumulated inside the pipe? Yeah, so uh, it's actually grown uh, uh, in a native way, and so we just use local water uh, to grow the biofilm inside the pipe wall, and that usually takes about 60 to 90 days. Um, and when the uh, material is grown, I can show you here, um, we actually have these removable coupons um, that we can uh, take from the pipe uh, and actually look at uh, the microbiological composition of the biofilm uh, by putting them under a microscope or doing DNA sequencing analysis and actually looking at what bacteria, what protozoa, uh, and what fungi actually reside there on the wall. And how does, uh, how does the research translate into uh, uh, application for those that are running uh, water distribution systems? Well, water utilities are interested because um, biofilm and material on the wall actually has impinges on a number of things. Um, one important thing is um, how long-lasting disinfectants are in the system. So typically a biofilm will consume, if I can use that word, will consume things like chlorine, which keep our water safe. And so any way that we can operate the system to reduce the amount of biofilm on the pipe wall is a good thing for water utility because they can keep their water safe with their disinfectants. Um, another uh, important application of this is that um, biofilms can actually act as reservoirs for uh, new and emerging toxins, uh, things like pharmaceutical products uh, and uh, personal care products. And so one of the things that we want to do here at Queen's is look at the role of biofilm in, in acting as a reservoir for all of these, um, for these potential toxins, uh, or maybe even having a beneficial effect in, in uh, treating them uh, in situ in the pipe wall. 
have um, the source uh, tank, which has all the water. And so water from the local system uh, in the city of Kingston is uh, drawn into this tank. This is actually a 3,800 liter tank. It's quite a large tank. It's about eight feet tall. And these pumps here, these red units, are pumps that take the water from the tank and pump them through an intake pipe, which then filters or circulates through uh, the rig itself so for all 200 meters of, of pipe. And then there's a connection from the rig back to the tank. So it, in fact, acts as a closed system. So water comes in from the tank and is returned to the tank. And to make sure that the quality conditions of the water, the, the water conditions fairly uh, mimic fairly closely the conditions that are in fact in the city system, there's a drain valve. So water is continuously being drained out of the tank and replenished with new water to try to mimic uh, city water as much as possible. And I notice also there's what looks like a big refrigeration unit. Yeah, so basically what we're standing in is a big fridge. Um, and so one of the things that we're interested in looking at as we do research with these two pipe rigs is the effect of temperature, water temperature on biofilm growth uh, and material accumulation. Because, because we live in a cold climate like in Canada, um, water temperature on any, in any given calendar year can fluctuate quite widely between about 4 degrees Celsius and 20 degrees Celsius in the mi middle of July. So temperature is a very important factor and we have the ability with this facility to control temperature to a very high level. And were there, are there other similar facilities in the world or in the, uh, uh, in the province, in the country, or is this one uh, unique? This facility is in fact unique to North America. Um, there are no other large-scale pipe rigs that look specifically at uh, material accumulation on pipe walls and the discoloration of drinking water uh, that results from that accumulation and mobilization. There is uh, another rig uh, in Europe, in England, uh, in the UK, in Sheffield, at the University of Sheffield, um, that looks at exactly the same thing. And in fact, this facility was somewhat modeled on their original facility in Sheffield. But the big difference between the two is that the Sheffield rig actually uses polyethylene pipe, PE, uh, because that's what's used in European cities. Now, I suspect you might have a, a number of experiments in mind, a number of questions that you're looking forward to answering. Um, uh, can you describe some of them? Yeah, so we're, we're, we've got a whole bunch of research questions that we'd like to have answered. But in the immediate term, we'll be looking at um, uh, how quickly or the rate of growth of, of these materials, uh, metals and biofilm, on, on the actual PVC pipe wall. Believe it or not, no one has inf any information on how quickly these things grow on PVC wall walls. Um, the next thing that we're interested in doing is actually lining the pipe with commercial uh, pipe liners. So these are spray-on uh, epoxies uh, that line the in internal coatings of the pipe to increase their hydraulics, improve their hydraulics, improve the water quality. And again, there's vi virtually no information on what types of materials and how quickly they grow on these liners. So that's another experiment that will uh, probably be undertaken in the next two or three years here at Queen's. And you mentioned previously when we spoke that uh, uh, you had some ideas for some uh, uh, experiments to uh, determine the effectiveness of flushing out pipes for maintenance purposes. Yes. Um, can you describe some of, the, some of that? Yeah, well, the water utilities in North America usually flush their systems either uh, reactively or proactively. Um, many utilities do so when they get customer complaints about red water or discolored water. Uh, others do so on a fixed schedule. Um, and our belief is that um, those, in, in those two cases, in fact, utilities may be a, 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 a using more water than actually is needed to flush pipe. Um, I don't think that the materials on the pipe walls are as adhesive as, as utilities think, and they probably could be using much lower flows. Uh, and so there's the application of this, of this research is to see what flows are in fact optimal for flushing PVC pipe, as well as other materials, line pipe, um, and there's an opportunity perhaps to save water and to save energy in the process for utilities. How did you get on the road to this research? Yeah, uh, well mostly from uh, visits to our colleagues in Sheffield who had been doing a lot of this uh, excellent research on polyethylene pipe. Um, but I didn't see anything uh, comparable in, um, in Canada or the United States. And our water concerns are slightly different than theirs in the sense that our climate is a great deal harsher. Uh, and so the cold climate application, the, the difference in climate is a big one from, uh, from the UK. 
and also the fact that um, the way in which we operate and manage our systems is very different than, than how they do it in the UK. And so, for example, the use of liners is a great deal more prevalent in, the, in North America than it is in the UK. And so I see uh, additional opportunities to investigate uh, material accumulation uh, as it relates to, to those operational and management practices uh, in the US and Canada. Um, yeah, so that really was the, the starting point. And also, I mean, like I said, there are no uh, comparable large-scale facilities that look at discolored water and material accumulation in North America. So this is a unique facility, uh, at least on this continent. So now, are you, uh, do you have a research team assembled? Are you looking for uh, 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 grad students who might be interested in participating? Do you have uh, colleagues that, uh, uh, that you're going yeah. to be collaborating with? Yeah, we, uh, again, I'm really starting the program, and so my first graduate student will be starting in September, which is very exciting, and so we'll be doing a first set of experiments. I am uh, planning to collaborate with a microbiologist to look at the microbiological aspects of biofilm growth, which is a very important part of the research. And um, we're also planning to collaborate with a water chemist to look at the interactions between what happens on the wall and what happens in the bulk water and the quality of the water uh, in the pipe. Here we have um, turbidity meters uh, and a chlorine analyzer. So the idea behind uh, measuring turbidity is that previous studies from Sheffield and other places have shown almost a one-to-one -one linear relationship between turbidity and uh, the presence of metals uh, in, in the pipe. And so in these experiments, we'll be using turbidity as an indirect or fairly direct measure of uh, the presence of metals along the pipe wall. So that's why we have these, these large turbidity units here. And we're also interested in the links between uh, the presence of a biofilm and uh, the decay of chlorine and other disinfectants that are used by this utility and other utilities in Canada. And so our idea is to measure chlorine uh, and other disinfectants in the system uh, in real time. Okay, so now we're in this uh, uh, wet laboratory space that is attached to the, uh, uh, to the pipe loop. What do we have here? Um, this is really wet lab space um, where we will be uh, sort of analyzing samples that we collect from the two rigs. Uh, to analyze them for water quality, various water quality parameters like turbidity, for example, pH, uh, and other uh, quality parameters. But we'll also be doing a lot of sample preparation uh, for DNA extraction uh, and sequencing, as well as uh, preparing samples to go under the microscope. So our intent is to use laser microscopy to really uh, try to understand the physical structure of the biofilm and how it impinges on uh, again, capturing um, materials like manganese and, and iron and other particulate matter. It looks like uh, an expensive proposition to put together a facility like this. How did you pull the, uh, uh, the support together? Where did it come from? And yeah, it is. Uh, this is not uh, an inexpensive undertaking. But in Canada, we're fortunate that we have uh, this wonder wonderful program with the Canada Foundation for Innovation that basically allows uh, researchers at universities to uh, get large amounts of funding to build facilities, to build infrastructure, to do uh, groundbreaking research um, that's internationally recognized. So CFI is uh, the funder of this, this uh, facility and we're very grateful for it. Well, thank you and good luck. Thanks, Matt.